good morning. It is Tuesday morning. Derby Jack here. You know, I've been talking about the power of the Holy Spirit and talking about what it means to be in the Spirit, what it means to have Christ in you, and what it means to have a relationship. But the thing about power is understanding, first of all, I've mentioned it many times, the Pentecostals have a grasp of one part of what power is, but they don't understand it. They, they are led to believe that by speaking in tongues, they're letting the Spirit in, and the Spirit is rushing in, like the day of Pentecost. The, the day that you became born again was your day of Pentecost. The Spirit came into you. Now, whether you spoke in tongues or not, that was never the relevancy. The relevancy was, did you allow the Spirit in? Like I said, as for the poor Pentecostals, they're seeming to believe that their, their ministers are always there to cast out demons. Isn't it funny that in the Pentecostal church, there seems to be more demons to be casted out than most other denominations? or most other rel religious practices in, in the Christian religion. Isn't it funny that it seems like there's a problem in the Pentecostal church if there are a bunch of demons that are always having to be casted out. And the thing of it is is that the demons can't be casted out by other demons. They think they're being casted out by the Spirit of God. The problem is that the demons like to play games. Demons will leave a host and go into other demons, and then another demon will come in. You're thinking, oh, I'm free, when you've allowed another demon in. Why? Because you don't understand the power of the Holy Spirit. They don't understand the power of the Holy Spirit. They, they think they're, they're speaking in tongues, they're, the Spirit's coming in. If you already received the Holy Spirit, what the hell are you waiting for? So I get down on this because you people are being manipulated. You people have been deceived from the day that you walked into those churches, from the day that you got baptized in those churches, from the day that you continued believing in the ministers of these churches, they have let you down. Because why? You're still going out there trying to speak in tongues, trying to understand the Holy Spirit, and sitting there waiting for something to come in and move around. Why well, don't, see, that's what gets me. I've been to Pentecostal churches. They irritate me. Because they're sitting there praying, oh, we're going to have a, we're, we're, we're have a revival. Let me tell you something. When a revival is sparked, it's re-sparked by the Holy Spirit. It's not sparked by a man who says it. When God decides to move in the Spirit, for, a, for, for an uprising in, in the spirit, I mean, then that's when God does it. Man doesn't have a right to do that. So when you sit here, oh, we're going to have a, uh, we're, we're going to have a revival next week. Did you ask God? Was God ready for your revival? Is anybody ready for the revival in which you stated? Or when God makes a revival, God knows the hearts that will come to him. So there's one of my pet peeves. Apostle Paul not only was a very good psychologist, understanding the nature of humanity and understanding the nature of the spirit, understanding that they don't mix like uh, oil and vinegar, that they are a separate beast. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Christ, of he the Christ, which was in Jesus. We now have that helper. We have He, the Holy Spirit, within us, the Christ, who is the power of God. Now, if we have the power in us, why do people wait for God to move in? God is already there. The problem is, you guys don't know it. You don't see it. Sort of like when Jesus came back after being resurrected. I think it was He was he was happened to be coming towards John or Bartholomew. I'm not sure of the people, and I forgot. I think it was him. Uh, he was he was on the road going going somewhere, Rome or something. And he caught and he and he was caught to them. 
and they they talked, but they didn't know it was him in the beginning. They didn't recognize his face. There's a reason for that. Until he began to start talking, and then they realized what I'm saying is that's what I'm talking about in the in, in the church. They they they're looking for something. It's there, but they don't recognize it. The, the apostles immediately recognize. They they because they had the availability of recognizing. The day of Pentecost is when they had the power. They didn't understand prior. Half the things that God that Jesus said while while he was alive, they still were like, huh? It was not until after his death and after and after his resurrection and after the day of Pentecost, when they received the Christ, that is when they recognized what they had. Recognized that prior when Jesus sent them out to speak the word, his power was with them then. But now it is always with them. And that's the thing that most Christians don't understand. Oh, I, I got born again. Yeah. So what have you been doing with it? Are you allowing, are you allowing the spirit to, to train you? Are you allowing the spirit to rise up? No, I'm, I'm born again. What does that mean to you? I know what it means to me. Now that I'm born again, I have a responsibility. I have a job to do. What do you think about your life? Do you have a job to do? You've been given all kinds of power. You've got a super cape. Hidden. You're a superman. Hidden. A superwoman. Hidden. you got powers beyond belief. you got a power that's so magnified, it's, it's, it's more powerful than a nuclear bomb. But yet, you don't even know it. You, you, you're just born again, and that's it. You're, you're safe because God. You're just waiting around until God comes. No, you got a job to do. You have a responsibility, and if you do have the Holy Spirit, why are you not listening to it? I guarantee you that Holy Spirit is not going to be in you idle. That Holy Spirit sitting here saying, "I'm in a vessel. The vessel needs to work. Good works." So the Apostle Paul understood the psyche. The Apostle Paul understood the power and the workings of the power of the Holy Spirit. In chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, Paul states, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, I have not charity. Oh, charity. Understand what this word means. Charity is not what you think it is in this particular context. Charity is a matter of movement of power. Meaning that if you don't have the Holy Spirit, anything you do that is not done in the Holy Spirit, even if it's in the goodness of your own heart, first of all, it starts out as being vanity. Because you're doing it for you to get accolades. Now, if you're moved in the Holy Spirit to do something, then it's not an egotistical do what you're doing. Whatever you're, if you're moved to go and help people down at a, at a, at a, at a, help, at, at a shelter or, or to help feed or, or to talk to somebody or to give somebody something, if you're moved in the Spirit to do it, that's a righteous move. That's a righteous work. If you're doing it on your own, outside of the Holy Spirit, then that is a selfish work because you want to get the accolades. Now you might say, well, what's the difference? You're doing a good work at God's. Yeah, but you're doing it for selfish reasons. You're, you're doing it to make yourself look good. You're doing it to, to, put, to, to, to put a good, uh, 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 you know, to tap, pat yourself on the back. And maybe some others will pat you on the back. So, Charity is the working. Without charity, what is charity to God? Doesn't God give us charity? He does it in the form of grace. His grace is our charity. His grace is our, is our sufficiency. His grace is our, uh, um, is our time period. His grace is upon us for a short period of time. So it has a twofold meaning. 
the grace of God has been replaced with the mercy of God. In the Old Testament, they worked off mercy more than you would consider grace. Because mercy dealt along with the blood sacrifices. They were coverings. Mercy was a covering. Grace is not just a covering. Grace is a period of time. And for you who are born again, or for you who do not have the Holy Spirit, and you're, you're having a grace period and a time of grace, and God graces you with his presence in the Spirit. Many multifold uses for grace. So, let me start this again. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though, and though, I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and not have charity, I am nothing. So, what is that charity? That charity is that grace, that, that charity of giving from the heart, but giving in the movement of the Spirit. So, if you do all these things on your own, using, using what you would say the power, but basically a lot of times you're not using power, you're using your own selfish strength, working off your own strength. Now, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give, my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. It's the same thing as saying, if I do all these things but I don't have the Spirit of God, what does it profit me? You, you, I did all this stuff in the name of God, but God's like, well, I didn't know anything about it. I wasn't working in the process. Now, and though I bestow all my, okay, I did that. Okay. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not, charity venteth not itself, uh, self-abasement, that's what that basically means, um, and is not puffed up. So think about men and women who say they're working for God, and they do all these things, and they, they put, I've seen videos where the ministers want you to know who they are. And, and they really, they, it, so and so ministry, and he's done this for so many years, and blah, blah, and all this stuff. And it's sort of like the same thing that I dealt with when I, a long, long time ago. Someday again, I'm going to do a life story about who I am and where I come from and my life. But I had dealt a long, long, long time ago with a cult called the Way International. They consider themselves a biblical teaching foundation. Uh, uh, te biblical Teaching Ministry Foundation, you know, and they believe certain things from the Bible, but they twisted things and stuff, and it took me a Being there, it, I learned a lot about cult symbolisms. I learned a lot about uh, uh, what it means to not be a Christian and make believe you're a Christian type thing. Well... They believed in speaking in tongues, and they believed that the speaking in tongues uh, was, a, you know, what, 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 what was the energy of God and all this stuff. They had a lot of different things. But the problem was, was that everything they did, when I got involved in it, they had these little meetings, twig fellowships, you know, in the homes. They didn't believe in the physical church, was a good thing, but like I said, they twisted the word. But the first thing they wanted you to get to know and the first person they wanted you to get to know, not Jesus now, mind you, was Victor Paul Werewell, who was the founder of the Way International. And you wanted to, they wanted you to get to know him, to fall in love with the father of the, of the, uh, 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 of the new word of God. From, and now when you heard him speak, he says, I'm going to speak the word like it's never been spoke from the first century church. And you're sitting there, oh, wow, this is a different minute. And he'd be talking about things, and it sounded good. But the more and more I started listening, 
I had the Holy Spirit, but I, I didn't recognize what was going on. And back then, I was being taught lessons. I was being taught what it meant not to be a Christian. I was being taught what it meant to lie to your congregation. Man, I, I learned a little bit what it was talked about being twisted-minded and how these people were, 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 were getting people to come in. They had the right idea. They had twig fellowships that would go out, uh, setting people two by two like it would be biblical like Jesus did with the apostles and stuff, having tw twig fellowship, inviting people in to become part of this. But it was all a lie. And you need to watch out for churches like this. When you go to a church for your first time, and the first thing they want you to know is to fall in love with their minister. I want to know whether that minister is in love with Jesus. I don't care about your minister until I hear his words. When I start hearing a minister speak, if he's not speaking the word of God, I'm getting up and walking out of your house of God. Because there's not your house of God is not the house of God that I want to be in. Because apparently your minister is more important than, than, than the love of God in Christ Jesus. Your, your minister seems to be more important to you than Jesus himself. So. Five, doth not behave itself unseemingly. Unseemly, I'm sorry. Got to get those glasses. I can't read. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in inequity, but rejoiceth in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. The power of God never faileth. The love of God never faileth. The workings of God never faileth. Charity. The need to do in spirit, charity. The need to give the power of God in charity. The love of God. To The need to Spread the word, charity. The need to help others, charity. The need to speak in love, charity. Even if it's harsh, in charity. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. I want you to understand this. It's the same thing as, like I said, when everything's been said and done, when God comes, when, 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 when the destruction of everything and the people are taken that need to be taken back to, to God everything in the power of the Holy Spirit will now go back to God okay even the Bible those who were left behind may go to a Bible and open it and it'll, words will disappear they won't be there for everything that was done in the power of the Holy Spirit. The word was given by inspiration of God spiritually. Men moved to speak and to write words that were the words of power, the words of the Holy Spirit. Those people spoke and wrote, passed down. This Bible has never been able to be vanquished, never been able to be hid. Remember my song, they call me Bible. They tried to burn me, they tried to hide me. No matter what they try to do, my word won't go away. But when God finally finishes his work on this world, then, only then, will the Bible be finished. Only then will the pages in the Bible disappear. The words in the pages, that mean, will disappear. For the work, the spiritual work, will now be fully done. 
the next book will be open when this one's done is the book of life which is not here on earth so 11 when I was a child I spake as a child I understood as a child I thought as a child but when I became a man I put away childish things for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face now I know in part but that shall but then shall I know even as also I am known and now abideth faith hope charity these three but the greatest of these is charity now many people believe that we have to be sweet and inviting you know when Jesus came to a village there was a lot of people who heard about him before he came and then they were they, they, they came and like you know well, I wonder if this is what they who they say it is you know and maybe he said well let's go and see him he's supposed to be in town and let's see what he can do remember those people back then were also dealing with a lot of charlatans even before Jesus and even after even the Apostle Paul mentioned that he'd go into a town and there would be people following him and they didn't like what he spoke and they tried to uh, 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 take over, you know. Well, yeah, well, Paul was old. You don't want to hear. Let me tell you about, you know. So they would come and they would try to hijack the Word of God, you know, try to hijack. Their, and then Paul would have to go back. You could see it in his letters, you know. He, I think he was speaking to uh, 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 the Galatians, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, without going into it, that it was Galatians and Colossians. Well, any, which one? Right now, I don't remember. Remember, I'm working 13-hour days. My brain is smushed. But anyway, the um, I may not always be accurate in certain places, but I, I, I know it's there. <clears throat> so anyway, he dealt, the Apostle Paul dealt, where he says, you know, I know that I've been there, and I told you, and then others came in and, and tried to upset everything that I said. He had to go back and, 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 and restate things and, and write letters to Timothy or somebody, and, hey, well, look, man, you know, uh, I told you, but you guys, you're, you know, you're falling apart. You're not doing what you're supposed to. Or others, he'd sit there and say, you know, you're doing excellent, you know. You're, uh, I, I, I'm, you're blessed and blah, blah. God's doing great. I, I wait till I can come and see you again, and so Paul understood all these things. But the problem is, is that people not understanding what it means to be a Christian and not understanding what it means to stand on the power of God and his word. The word itself is, 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 is not only a tool, it's a reciprocal. What it is, it, 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 the power of the Holy Spirit within you, when you read the words and you read them out to other people, the spirit is translating those words in the proper sequence, in the way they're supposed to be. I'm not the greatest speaker. I don't perform like a, a great, you know, speaker or a talking head. Uh, I will sit here and uh, uh, uh. I will sit here and have a thought fart, you know, a brain fart. I will sit here and not be able to also uh, uh, sometimes say the words I really want to say. I'm not fluent in, 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 in highfalutin uh, 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 vocal uh, language, okay? I, I, I'm a moron, okay? If it wasn't for the Spirit of Christ, I'm a moron. I'm an idiot. I'm a, I'm a self-delusional idiot by myself. If it wasn't for God in my spirit, if it wasn't for the Spirit within me, I'm a doof-off. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a goof-off. Uh, uh, I'm an idiot. Um, uh, uh, I'm a, before I became a Lord again, let me, I guess I could explain what I was. I was a self-absorbed, egotistical, and I had to have egotistical at the time because I was been in and out of foster homes and was brought up. I needed that ego to get me through. 
I lived, I, 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 I left my last foster home. I'm not going to get in my last Just I left my last foster home at the age of 17 and went out on the road, hitchhiking across the country. 17-year-old back then. I wasn't afraid. I was egotistical. I was, I, was, I was a child who was angry. And I wasn't afraid. I could have been killed out there. I spent weeks to months out on the road from Jersey to California. Oh, I had a hell of a time. Some good, some bad. And the stories will come out eventually. But I, I, I'll sit down one day and give you a, a life story. But in saying that, now that I have the Holy Spirit power, I am cured in my heart. I am not perplexed anymore. I am not fragmented. I am being healed spiritually, physically. Maybe, well, not as physical. Mentally, I'm healed. Mentally, I am at one and in peace with the Spirit of God in me. The Christ. I am in peace with the with this Christ, with he the Christ. And I don't like to argue as much with him because I realize that his movements and the things that he wants me to do are more important than the things that I want to do. When you finally figure that out in your life, that your life is not for you. If you were born again Christian, you are now filled with a spirit of service. You don't have to be a minister. I'm not talking about starting a church. Maybe that's not your calling. Maybe your calling is just to be a warrior. Maybe your calling is just to be there when somebody is in need. You know, God does take your natural talents. He does want to use your natural talents. As you see, God uses my natural musical abilities for his purpose, not for mine. Every song that is written and given to me in five minutes or 20 minutes or I'm working on it for two days is done in the spirit. Not for my vain glory. I'm not the greatest singer in the world. I'm not the greatest guitar player in the world. I, I'm adequate. But here's the thing. You know, I, 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 I like listening to Justin Johnson. He's a great guitarist. I think he's here in Nashville. The man is a bluesy guy. He can take any, he's got thousands of guitars. He even, you know, gives them away. And, and the man is given guitars when they're being made to see how they play through him. And the man has built his empire and he does his videos. And one time I asked him, I said, I, I, I left a, 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 a message on his, you know, underneath in one of his videos. And I said, I sure hope you never sold your soul off to Satan to play as well as you play. And I've noticed a couple of his videos. As much as I like his music, I've had to back off listening to him. <clears throat> because I've started noticing symbolisms around his, his studio. I've noticed rings that he was wearing. I've noticed that in the several years that his videos have been up, and I'm not talking against the man to talk against him. I respect the man's music, but at the same time, I got to understand where that talent is coming from because I started looking at the symbolism and started looking at the man has not aged in almost what, six years of his videos, he has not aged at all. That started to bother me. So I still have him here, and I might listen to something that I, every once in a while, but I don't sit here and worship the man. I don't sit here and, and listen to it all the time. I like some of the music, but I'm realizing where he is. And I'm going to have to make a decision to probably get rid of a, get rid of listening to him at all because that would be wrong to do because I'm dabbling what? In the nature of sin. So, see, you got to be truthful with yourself. You got to know your weaknesses and you got, my weaknesses have been, you know, music. 
I always wanted to make it, always wanted to be that, you know, but anyway. So try to understand where I'm coming from. Try to understand where you're coming from. Are you working in the spirit? Are you being moved in the spirit? Or are you a twinkling brass symbol? You know, or are you just, you know, grinding your bones? Are you just doing things to make yourself look good? You're, you're going to do this and you're going to do that for God. Remember my little story about the ministry? So anyway, that's all I can say today. Got to get ready to go back to my slave job and uh, hope for the best. Try to get through it. Could I could use your prayer of power and strength today. So I thank you all for your prayer. Y'all, I do feel. I hope you feel the prayers that I give you. And I speak for you. So anyway, love y'all. Derby Jack out. See you all on the other side.